Well, um, Mr. Chairman, just uh, let me, and I'm, I'm voicing my own views here clearly, but obviously Russia remains a, an area of great concern because we all know there is not legitimate media freedom in Russia. Putin's Russia is a, a nicer version of Stalin's Russia uh, or, or uh, Brezhnev's Russia, uh, just under a more gentle face, but, but the iron fist is uh, still there. Uh, and we know that journalists, investigative reporters, uh, can run, but they can't hide because they've been murdered in London. They've been murdered outside the boundaries of the Russian Federation. And let me just say, just to be terribly candid here, uh, there's great distress and great angst uh, throughout the community that follows these issues of what uh, Radio Free uh, Europe and mis under the leadership of Steve Korn has done in terminating 41 people at Radio Moscow. And that is a self-inflicted wound by an organization that previously has been almost idolized by dissidents and by others in Moscow. And then we have managed to unite the dissident community. We have even brought former Premier Gorbachev in uh, and have united them in opposition to Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty, uh, which I never thought would be possible. Uh, given the prior history that uh, this organization had had. And then the very callous manner in which uh, Mr. Korn has dealt with the 41 people who were terminated and the, the, the audio of his comments back in Prague where really no compassion was shown, no sympathy, it's my way or the highway. That's not the, uh, the way of a good manager. Uh, a good manager, even when he has to make or she has to make tough decisions, certainly tries to show empathy for those who uh, are on the losing side of the tough decisions, and that didn't even come through. And then a day we know that uh, information that this committee has sought uh, from Mr. Korn has been denied, at least delayed. And as they say in the uh, civil rights movement, uh, uh, freedom de delayed is freedom denied. And uh, I would say in terms of our responsibilities, information delayed is information denied uh, in terms of the operation of this organization. So this is totally separate from Mr. Sherman. My remarks have nothing to do with him. I simply applaud what he's done. But I should point out for the record, in my personal view, we have management issues at RFE that have created additional problems in terms of our listenership and the audience that we would often have appealed to in the past in Russia now no longer sees Radio Free Europe as a friend but indeed as a foe and it's a sad set of circumstances that we've arrived at. Um, if I could just uh, add to Governor Ash's uh, remarks about the situation in Russia. Um, I know from some of our deliberations that that you know clearly we have uh, challenges in Russia. They're not letting us have radio signals. We know that the Voice of America still enjoys an affiliate uh, relationship for the, for the moment, uh, for, for 30 minutes or so. But you know, this is another example where we have um, legacy com companies in important strategic places for us. And we've, we've talked, Steve and David have talked about ways to share resources there, and I'm encouraged by that. Um, I know I'm looking forward to our meeting on the 13th and 14th where we'll have the heads of the Russian operations of both companies in the room together with experts to discuss, you know, a very challenging media environment. Um, but I would hope, though, that, that both presidents, both the heads of the two VOA and RFE would uh, be sure to use all the assets available to the U.S. government. Um, clearly, we have a State Department that engages the, 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 uh, diplomatically on the Russia front and is useful to us in many places around the world in getting our signals in and be sure that we do that. Um, and be very aggressive about uh, use of American help in places there. Um, so I, that was just my, uh, what I just wanted to add to Governor Ash's remarks about Russia.